All right, so in this video, we are going to talk about the Retro Game 350M, and the M stands for metal. I'm doing quite some different reviews here on the channel about different handhelds, and I must say sometimes it's pretty damn depressing reviewing these shitty products, but this thing sparkles my wicked mojo back up and running to the maximum level, because this thing mm, is really damn awesome. And for the people who are just not familiar with these products, the Retro Game 350 in general is a very nice quality product. And the Chinese bringing us now the metal casing version. So there are some minor differences compared with the previous model. And that is what we're going to take a closer look at. So we're going to open it up and we're going to have some fun. So what are we going to get beside the handheld itself? Inside we're finding the basic toilet paper manual. This is the deluxe edition. And it just explains how it works, but we're going to show you in the video, so you don't need this. Hey, I'm even getting the second one. We're going to start with this one too. And here we have the Type-C, is it? Yes, finally we're using the Type-C connection. And this is for data transfer and charging the system. So, but let's take a close look at the system itself, because damn, this thing looks very nice. This looks really cool. All right, I'll move all this crap from my desk and let's go on with the show. First, let's talk about the layout, because this was the first thing that really sparkles my wicked mojo back again, because finally they listened to the community and put the D-pad over here, and I'm very happy because I am a D-pad guy. The analog sticks have been changed, I'm doing a little bit quick compare. Uh, what are the differences, but we're having the two wiggly Chinese joysticks over here, A, B, H, Y, select start, and here at the bottom they did also do a small change, we're having now two CF cars. They put a little sticker over because this one is for the firmware, so if you mess this thing up, you have a brick of a system. You can always, of course, make a new CSD card, but your earlier settings will be gone. Two stereo speakers. Here at the side, we having the on and off switch. At the top here, we have a lot of different things going on. We're having two USB connections, an HDMI that is still, still not working in this version, and they are they keep saying, yeah, we're going to release an update, blah, 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 but it still doesn't happen. Here we have the AV out. We're having very nice. Oh, I need to start an Acer ML channel because this thing sounds very nice. At the back, we're having two little rubbery pads so it can't slide away. Some information about the product itself, which you can see when removing these screws, you can put, pull the back plate off. And of course, we having the volume control here at the side. And that is something that is not very common with these Chinese handles. Some have a scrolling wheel, some don't even have a button that you need to use the software or shortcuts to basically swap back to a different sound level. The display itself, that is something we're going to talk about. But, but right, for the people new to the channel, uh, or maybe new to the product or both, I'm going to do a quick overview how this device works. So what you're going to get when booting up is the open Dingux menu. With the shoulder buttons, you can go to the next, let's say, categorized. Here we have the emulators, games, settings, applications. Emulators are just for emulating retro games. So there's quite a, there's a big support if it comes to, so let's say, separate emulators. Even up to DOS is possible to emulate on this device. We have MAME, CPS 1, 2. And it seems to be there is a CPS3 emulator out there, but nevertheless we have a Super NES, and, and this device is powerful enough to run. I think we can say it runs the PlayStation games on 60 FPS. The games are more like homebrew games. There's a big community behind this too. For example, we have Free Doom, we have the original Doom, uh, Hexen, all the old games, including Street of Rage Remake. And for the people who are not really familiar with this, Street of Rage Remake is, in my opinion, the best basically the best Street of Rage out there. All the other things like settings for the wallpaper, you can all change it over here. We have some application, if you have any problems, you can test the controls, for example, with this one. Nevertheless, there are quite some different things that are possible with the Open Dingook system. Also, you can just, of course, add your, your own menu. There are quite some things you can change out. But keep in mind, when you're deleting something, it's always a little bit tricky to set up back up. Wow. So far so good. Hmm. 
The audio is very good now. Stereo sound. The display itself looks amazing. Alright, let's test the D pad. Perfect. Everything comes out instantly without any problem. Doesn't improve my playing style, but. So far, so good. And looks place is very nice. Looks way better than the previous model. <laughs> they stab me. All the sound effects are here. Here comes the soundtrack. And with a device like this, you don't have any screen tearing at all. That's amazing. The sound effect. <laughs> Alright, so let's try some fighting force for the PlayStation 1. And the first thing that I'm noticing is it runs very smooth, full FPS. Can you not wait for your turn? And we're having four trigger or four shoulder buttons, so we have all the functionalities with the games.
and this game runs just amazing on the retro game 350 Having a CPU friend is just awesome. But if you're having a Retro Game 350 already in your collection, is it worth buying if you want to have the metal version? If you are a big fan of the D-pad like me and you want to have this thing on the right position in combination with a very nice metal housing, yeah, it can be a very good upgrade. But if you look at the specifications, no, not really. Yes, it has a better screen, but that's the only thing I can think of that is way better in combination with specification because the main board and the specs are basically the same. Still, you need to decide. Do you want to upgrade it from the old Retro Game 350? Okay, here a quick side by side for the people not familiar with both products. This is the first edition and this thing is fully made of plastic and what you already can see that the joysticks are more a little bit like the Xbox 360 controller. I was a big fan of the D-pad so I am very happy that they finally put the D-pad in my opinion in the right position. Also if you look at the analog sticks here they did a change and I will zoom on a little bit. So you can see that they have released the new retro game 350M with new kinds of analog sticks. And that is a little bit more convenient if you want to take this thing with you because as you can see over here, the old analog stick is sticking out very high and that is a little bit of a problem and you can damage the analog stick. Both of the devices have an IPS display inside. But what you already can see here when you're putting them side by side that the retro game has a way better display. It's more bright but also it has a different resolution. Keep in mind it is not convenient for every single game you emulate but it's a little bit of extra. And what I understand is that when you're having this let's say better resolution screen it will consume more energy so you have less of a battery life. And that's something that's maybe just a little bit of a downgrade. But it's safe to say that the Retro 350M is a very decent portable device from China. Not only the metal shell that keeps this handheld very cool because when you're playing for it quite some time and I played for let's say around 5 hours and I did notice that this thing is getting really hot. And with the metal skin or the metal housing you don't have this issue. So when you're looking at the displays of the retro game system you can see that the retro game or the metal version has a little bit of an upgrade if it comes to the display. It has a higher resolution and you can already see that the image is a little bit sharper and more colorful than the previous model. So that is a very big positive side of this thing. But what I do understand is that because this thing is running on a better display it will consume a little bit more energy. So keep in mind that your playtime will be less compared with the older model. I am happy they changed out some different things, for example the little CF cards, it's a very convenient thing. The speakers at the bottom, they sound a little bit more louder than the previous model and the D-pad on the right position, I am a very happy man if I look at this device. The only downside is that when making this video the HDMI function still is not working and even if it's working how good will it work because I did notice with AV out function with device like this and open Dingux combination that not every emulator and program is running perfectly when you're having the TV out function. So the Retro Game 350M, it's not a cheap handheld, but I think it's worth its money. It's a little bit of a shame if you look at the previous model, they didn't give this thing a hardware upgrade. And I mean the internals, that gives me a little bit more power and we can emulate more stuff. But at the end, what you're paying for is simply the housing itself. You're paying for a better screen and overall I am pleased but keep in mind this thing is not cheap. So this is what you're going to get. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family and if you have any questions you can always leave it in the comments. And we'll see you in the next video.